Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Hope everybody's doing good out there. Today we are learning all about the Palithoas, or for short, just Pallies, or even the Button Polyps. These polyps are huge compared to other little Zoas that you can get. Some can get up to 2 inches in diameter, so they are very big. And they have some great collars on them, and they're very easy to take care of. So they're good for beginners, and they're even good for that very experienced reef hobbyist that wants some new color and new looks in his tank. Prices on them, you usually have to spend about $40 to get a nice frag of them. And that frag will have one to three polyps on it, usually. Care level, very easy, like I said. It's a great one for anybody. They're very hardy, and they're not one that you have to constantly feed all the time. They pretty much can feed off the light. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78, pKH 8 to 12, pH 8.1 to 8.4, and your salinity 1.023 to 1.025. Now, colors on them, this is where a lot of people like them. Lots of the greens and pinks are what people always want to get. There's a mixture of a green and white and pink color all together on some of them, like you're seeing in the video. Those are what people really want. There's also some other ones like browns and purples that you can get. Another really cool thing about them is they can actually change color depending on the tank they go in and the lights that are shining on them. So the colors you're seeing in the store that you buy it in, once you actually bring it home and put it in your tank, you might actually see some differences. Diet, so they are a photosynthetic coral, so they're going to be feeding off the light. But it's also good to feed them and spot feed them with some liquid foods. They love things like oyster fees. Fuel is another one, a new one I've been using a lot. They love that. And even things like reef roids, you can sprinkle that over the top of them and you'll see that little head close up real fast. And that's them trying to keep all that food near their mouth so they can eat it up. And they will love that. Helps their colors, helps them grow faster, and just overall keeps them healthier. Origin, so they usually come from the Indo-Pacific area along the Great Barrier Reef. But most of the time now, you're really just getting aquaculture ones. They're very easy to grow in a tank, so a lot of times people get them and grow them and then sell them. Venomous, so yes, they are a venomous coral, and we'll talk about their toxin. But one thing to know is they're not going to sting other surrounding corals, but they can be stung. You'll definitely see if like a torch or something, a nemone, a mushroom is too close to it, you'll see them close up real tight, and you definitely don't want them getting stung like that. But they're not going to sting other corals around it. Placement. Usually bottom for these as they don't require much light, but at the end of the day, we've seen them grow all over the tank. But a lot of people would like to put them in the bottom, kind of near a cave, and they'll start growing along there. Current, I would say medium to high. Just kind of depends on the one you get. You'll definitely have to see if they are staying shrunk up all the time. There's probably too much current on them, but you definitely want at least some current on them because that'll keep the detritus from growing. And also hair algae can grow around them too. So you want to make sure their base is really clean. That way they don't start growing some stuff that you don't want around their skin. Lighting, I would say moderate, you know, 50 to 100 par if you're looking at that kind of level. But they can be kept under a variety of lighting. You know, we have them in really dark tanks where it's almost complete blues. And then they'll be in other reef tanks where it's super bright. Now, I will recommend whenever you first put them in your tank, usually it's best to acclimate them at a low light level and then increase it as they get older. Now, if you don't have an acclimation period on your light, say you just have T5s or an LED that simply cuts on and off, it's usually best to put them at a more bottom level of the tank in a shaded area, and then eventually you can slowly move them up throughout the weeks into the spot you want to keep them at, and that'll help them to get used to it. Tank size, any size, doesn't matter with these. You just want to make sure you got good water levels, good water chemistry, and also just making sure they got plenty of room because these guys can take over and they can grow pretty quick. So you want to put them in a spot where they're going to have plenty of room to take over on that rock. Now people are always curious about fragging these, so they tend to extend their little stem much longer than your typical zoas. So that makes it easy to go in there and make a cut, and then you can glue them to a frag plug. Now another thing I always like to do, that way you don't have to get in there and start cutting them, is you can just put rubble rock right around the first frag that you get. And as they start to grow and spread out, those little bitty babies will start to grab onto the rubble rock around it. And then you just grab that little piece of rubble rock and then you'll have little pallies on it that you can put wherever else or sell it. So you could also do that way. Now always make sure to do a good acclimation whenever 
putting them into your tank. And I always try to recommend people to dip their pallies and their zoas before actually put them in your show tank just because they tend to come in the bags very dirty and a lot of them have pests on them. We always had trouble with zoas just coming in with a ton of pests on them. So we would always try to make sure to dip them that way all that's off and then once they go into the tank you know they're good healthy and it's like they basically got all their medicine that they needed. Now to jump into the toxin that they do have so some pallies and even zoas they do contain a neurotoxin called polytoxin and so be very mindful of any cuts on your hands and also whenever you are handling these whether it's putting them in your tank or if you're just even in your tank doing a water change and you move them from one spot to the another make sure you wash your hands after getting out of the tank don't touch your mouth don't touch your eyes don't have open wounds that that toxin could get in because it can really hurt you so make sure you stay very careful with these if anything you know put on some gloves too but always just be very careful, be very mindful whenever dealing with these because some of them do have that toxin. Other than that, that's pretty much a good high level of what you need to know to take care of these pallies. They're a great one for anybody in the reef hobby. Good one if you're just wanting to try a new coral out this hardy. It's a great one to try, especially if you don't have some big fancy LED light. You just have some basic ones. It's also a good one because they don't need that much light to survive. If you do have any other questions or comments, please leave them down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about us, and I will see y'all later. Hope everybody has a great weekend.